Welcome back to another video presentation from Saturn Alliance. This video will focus on some of the more advanced features of Microsoft Virtual PC. Help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us to improve what we currently provide. All donations, no matter how small, will ensure the continuation and improvement of our offerings. To make a donation, go to donation.satinalliance.com.au Now that we've run up our PC using virtual PC, what we need to do is to improve its functionality on our host system. So the first thing that we need to do normally is to install something called Virtual Machine Editions. To do this, you hit the right alt key to free up your um, cursor, go up to action, then select install or update virtual machine editions. You'll get the following message, hit continue. Basically what will happen now, an ISO image will be mounted on the virtual machine that you have and it will auto launch and simply follow through the setup to install the virtual machine editions. Virtual machine editions allow you to do things like drag and drop from your virtual machine to your host desktop as well as map drives between your host desktop and the virtual machine making it far easier to transfer files. Simply follow through the setup steps to install virtual machine editions into your virtual machine. This needs to be done on each virtual machine that you create so that the functionality is available every time you load a virtual machine. Once our virtual machine editions have been installed, we'll be prompted to finish. Uh, we will then be required to reboot our virtual PC for these machine editions to become operational. One of the really handy features about Virtual PC is that you're able to go up to the action menu and you can pause your virtual machine to stop it from currently operating or you can actually, when you select close, you can choose to save the state so that it basically freezes it in time. You can also choose to turn off and save the changes and turn off and delete the changes. If you choose to turn off and delete the changes, then any change you've made since the virtual machine has booted will be lost. This is great if you want to keep a standard image to work from and return it to its original state. Now if we look at the low level files that form part of the host operating system in the virtual machine, you'll see that our virtual machine here is saved in a directory called SBS2003 and you'll see that we have the virtual hard disk, a VMC which is the, basically the configuration for our virtual machine, network cards, memory and we also have this temporary VUD file. This holds all the changes that we've made in our current session. And as you can see since we've booted up our machine and not closed and saved it, all the changes are stayed in this VUD file, not in the original VHD file. What we want to do basically is we want to commit all these changes to the original VHD disk and then we want to use this disk as a base image to create other machines. Now we could create virtual other virtual machines by either copying this and reconfiguring or we could start the whole process again. But what we can do is Virtual PC allows us to create a base image and then create a number of other images based off this original machine, which is what I'm going to do here. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write all the information that we've made in our changes back to the original hard disk. Prior to doing that, to make sure that the images is optimal and as small as possible, the first recommendation is that you go into your virtual machine and you will basically defragment all your disks to ensure that there is as little free space available. You want to make sure that it's compressed and compact and again prior to doing any 
um, defrag of the disk in your host operating system, delete un any unnecessary files. So to defragment, we right mouse click on the drive, we select properties, then we will select tools, and from here we can select to defragment our disk. Once our disk has been defragmented, what we can do is we can mount a virtual machine utility that will compact our virtual machine disk. So to do this, we select CD, capture ISO image. We then navigate through our local hard disk down into program files, into Microsoft Virtual PC, into the directory called Virtual Machine Editions. And in here we find a ISO image called Virtual Disk Precompactor. We select this, this will now mount the ISO image, much like our virtual machine editions, which we ran earlier, it will allow us to compact and compress our virtual machine disk to get it as optimal as possible. Simply follow through the steps here to compact the disk and ensure that it is as small as possible prior to shutting the machine down and committing all those changes back to the original hard disk. So once our disk has been compacted, what we need to do is we need to shut down our virtual machine as we would normally with any machine that we have. And once the machine is shut down, we then need to select the option that will write all the changes back to the hard disk. So first step is, is to shut the machine down as we would normally and wait for that process to complete and we'll then be prompted by virtual machine as to how we want to handle the closing of the virtual machine. Now that the virtual machine has finished shutting down, we're presented with a number of options um, in the program. As you can see, we can commit the changes to the virtual hard disk, save any changes to the undo or the temporary area, or we can delete the changes. So what we want to do here is to write all the changes that we've made back to the original hard disk so we can use this as a base. So we simply select this option and go OK. Virtual PC will now commence the procedure of writing all the changes that we've made in back into the original virtual hard disk. And you'll see this process taking place in the bottom left hand corner of the virtual PC screen. And it will say merging hard disks. As this process continues, the status bar will move to the right. When complete, virtual PC console will close. Once the virtual PC has fully written back to the hard disk and we look at the host operating system, we will see that the VHD image is now the full size and there is no other file apart from the VMC file. So the first, first thing to do to create a differential image is to launch the virtual hard disk wizard from the file menu of virtual PC, select next, I want to create a new virtual disk, new virtual hard disk. I now select the location. I'm going to put it in a clean directory, which I've called differential. It's going to be based on the full image that I created previously. Now, when we select our virtual disk options here, I select the differencing option. Next, now it asks me for my parent hard disk. I'm going to select the image of the small business server which was shut down and written to just previously. I go next, finish, and it's now created a virtual hard disk. I can now use this virtual hard disk when I create a new virtual machine. Once again, help us continue to make material like this available. If you find this video beneficial, we would ask you to make a donation towards helping us improve the content. You can do this via donation.satinalliance.com.au. Once again, thank you.